Finally, the movie that everyone has been waiting for for months, seen the first trailer in the summer, has almost arrived. You can see some Napoleon movie reaction on YouTube. You can see that people had access to early screenings and you can see what they're saying. You can also watch so many Napoleon movie trailer reaction. I have made two of them because I thought they were absolutely brilliant. But what's so interesting about the Napoleon movie is not just the Napoleon movie, it's the discussion around historical accuracy, it's a discussion around Ridley Scott's comments to historians, get a life, <laughs> when he was himself criticized for not having historical consultants for his movie. Ridley Scott has been interviewed by the historian and TV presenter Dan Snow and I watched this interview and I thought it was really remarkable to have Sir Scott um, insight in how he envisioned the movie and why he chose Joachim Phoenix, why he chose Vanessa Kirby and how he filmed these big battles that are going to take your breath away. But for me it was also the comments that he made about history itself. So first of all he acknowledged that he wanted to do this movie because Napoleon is a big historical figure. Here you would think that then it means that he has a particular love for history. But then he's going to dismiss the work of historians and I think the things that has kind of rubbed me the wrong way, <laughs> if I can say that, is when he said there are four hundreds or more books on Napoleon. I read the first two because, it's what he's saying, I read the first two because they were the ones that were the most accurate, because historians, what they do then is just, they just continue rewriting history. You mean like directors in cinema? You're just making the same movie over and over again? Probably not. And so maybe you should have read more than just two books on Napoleon. Also, his argument that the first two biographies of Napoleon or the most accurate is probably wrong because there was a strong agenda to make either him a villain or a legend at the very time. And I would say that historians also acquired skills over the centuries. Now being a historian is a true job. We have methodologies, we have peer reviews, we do advance the field of history. By doing that we don't just take face value some of the sources that exist. We confront them, we analyze them, we criticize them, but more importantly we debate it among ourselves as academics and historians, not just part of academia as I said but also historians in the public sphere. Public historians also do that in their own way, telling sometimes more narrative history but always questioning the sources, why it was written, by whom, when, what purpose. By doing so, I believe that the most accurate, you know, uh, biographies of Napoleon are going to be probably the most recent ones because there is a bigger effort into trying to get down to the truth, get down to a more believable depiction of Napoleon. What I love though about Sir Lescott is when he said, you know, to his critics, because he's been completely attacked, especially by the French prince, you know, the French. <laughs> Are you surprised? <laughs> I am not. <laughs> but Reed Lescott said also, which is true, were you there? You know, you don't know, you weren't there. But Sir Scott, you don't know, you weren't there either. But now let's also make a big defense of Sir Reed Lescott. I am grateful that he made this movie. I am grateful because it does give a platform to historians, not just the ones who are experts in Napoleon, but also the ones who have an interest in history itself, in history the field, like me. I mean, honestly, it is so great when a Hollywood movie has such an impact that historians then get a platform to discuss their own research interest. There is something so great when Hollywood is interested in 
historical drama. It means that historians can share their love for history, can share their own research. I really do not think that you should look for historical accuracy in a Hollywood movie. I was also myself, like I made videos, I do history police videos, so obviously I was really, you know, upset with Mary Queen of Scots movies because there were lots of problems. However, it did create a moment for, you know, an interest in the period, in the works of historians who have worked on Mary Stuart and Elizabeth I, like myself. And I think that is how Hollywood, <laughs> you know, the media and the humanities should work together. Actually, I'm even going to be cheeky here and give a message to Sir Ridley Scott. Please look at my book, Blood, Fire and Gold. Let's make an epic movie on Elizabeth I and Catherine de' Medici. Let's talk about battles, wars. Um, you're right, sex can be boring as well. He said that in his interview with, with Dan Snow. Um, you know, but let's talk about the complicated relationships between Henry II and Catherine de' Medici. Let's talk about the complicated relationships between Elizabeth I and her suitors. If you wanted to make an epic movie on these two women, please do consider my book <laughs> and me as a consultant. I would love to be working with you, despite the fact that you told me to get a life. I do think my life is pretty good, actually. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> you don't go to the cinema to learn about history. You go to the cinema to get entertained. I haven't seen the movie. I do believe from the trailers that it will be entertaining. I do not expect it to be historically accurate. And I encourage you, the audience, the people who are interested in watching this movie, for whatever reason, for your love for history, for your love for Napoleon, for your hatred for Napoleon, whatever is the reason, or for your love for Ridley Scott's talent, to also check the videos that are made, to check the social media, to check the works of historians. Look at Dan Snow's history hit. Look at my channel if you want to, obviously. But look at Zach White. Look at some fantastic French channel that discuss the accuracy so well of the movie. If this is what you're interested in, let's use historical fiction here as a true door and window to the past to know more about the real Napoleon. But let's not forget that none of us were there. Indeed. Thank you so much for watching my reaction to Ridley Scott's comments and I cannot wait to hear what you thought about the movie. I will be releasing two more videos, one about the real Napoleon, a second one kind of an ultimate guide where I compiled my videos. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!